Through 2017, Africans have actively played a role in protecting the environment. In Nigeria, we met a women's group that recycles plastic waste to make various products and accessories for sale. The recycling program was started in 2012 by the American University of Nigeria to create environmental awareness as well as help people learn new skills. We are working towards doing the right thing. So whenever we use plastic bags, we pick them up. It has become a valuable thing now. Because of us, there are few plastic bags in the streets compared to how it was before. The program has really helped. 2017 also saw the banning of polyesterine foam food containers in Zimbabwe. The ban came after research findings showed the trays were a health hazard and contributed to environmental pollution. Although the ban has been helpful for the environment, it has presented new challenges for business owners who cannot afford biosafety containers. The problem is that it was done with a short notice and uh, some of us were caught on it. I think it should have been given um, time for us to prepare ourselves to adjust to the new packaging because even the suppliers are not yet uh, ready to supply us with the new packaging. In Cameroon, a young engineer made it his mission to teach young people in rural communities about the power of clean energy. Bolivier Wakam helped people install solar panels and use a free and accessible source of energy. Wakam's Africa Tech Solar put up solar-powered streetlights, multimedia installations and a water purification plant. This energy is sourced locally, meaning that we tap into solar energy to power the panels. So what we have here is an independent system that uses a battery charged by the sun, which then powers the panels, and the advantage is that the solar energy does not pollute the environment, it's clean energy and it's renewable. Renewable sources of energy can be used over and over again, and people don't need to pay for the electricity. It's free. A company in Kenya began manufacturing briquettes from human waste and sawdust collected in the Rift Valley region. Carbonized waste and sawdust are ground into fine particles before being mixed together to form the briquettes. The project aims to help protect the environment and improve sanitation, especially in poor parts of the area. Residents have since embraced the briquettes and are using them for cooking and other purposes. In this case, we are using the drum kiln, whereby the sludge is fed. The drum has uh, some holes uh, uh, at the bottom. These holes allows the oxygen to come in in a controlled manner. That oxygen will only support combustion, but to a certain level, so that it doesn't burn completely into ash. In this way, you are able to eliminate all the volatile matters, all the harmful gases. And it, it is at this point that you ensure that your sludge doesn't smell, it's safe for hardly uh, when you are, doing, you are carrying out the other uh, processes, which is milling and uh, briquette production. Africa also bore the brunt of the negative impacts of climate change, such as extended droughts and flooding in 2017. Conservationists hope that such initiatives will help not just the continent, but slow down global warming and climate change. Terry Wangari, CGTN.